voices shall continually be in my mouth No matter what I see or how I feel As long as I'm breathing, oh yes I'm breathing I'll bless the Lord As long as I'm breathing, oh yes I'm breathing I'll bless the Lord Father have your way in this place You be glorified in it all Come on let's raise it together, say I will bless the Lord at all times And His praises and His shall continue leaving No matter what I no see, no matter what I see or how I feel As long as I'm breathing As long as I'm breathing Oh yes I'm breathing I'll bless the Lord As long as I'm breathing As long as I'm breathing Hey, oh yes I'm breathing I'll bless Come on say, oh magnify Oh magnify the Lord that's the reason why we're here tonight. Let's lay down our cries. Let's lay down our cries. Luke 22, verse 31. As you're looking for that, I, I want to give you the subtitle from You're Not the Boss of Me is Faith Over Fear. Faith Over Fear. I believe sometimes we have half the choice. Either let faith lead us or fear lead us. You have to make a choice if faith is going to lead your life or fear is going to lead your life. I pray today that you choose faith. Amen? You guys ready? All right. It's good to see Vanessa back. All right. Praise the Lord. She's just uh, recovering from surgery and she's doing good. Looks, she looks look like you're glowing. You're glowing. Amen. And where's Sister Jessica at? Where's she at? Is she here? Oh, oh, she's in Children's Church? Oh, okay. Well, we're going to wish her a happy birthday when she gets out. Amen. But she's celebrating her birthday. Luke chapter 22, verse 31. You guys have it? This is, this is Jesus speaking to Peter before Jesus was going to go on the cross. He was warning Peter about what's about to happen. Okay. And this is, and if I could, if I could be truth and on, on, honest with you, this is what I tell people all the time. There's something about to happen to you, and they always have this blank look like it's never going to happen to them. They're like, I go, bro, sister, this is what's going to happen to you. Not me. I'm different than everybody else. Well, Peter was that person. And then P Jesus told Peter, Simon, Simon. Remember, he called Peter, Peter, but before Peter was Simon. So he was not calling him the Peter name. He was calling him his Simon name, which meant read, which means up and down like this. When he called him Peter, he called him the rock. So he referenced not Peter, Simon. He called him his old name because he was acting like the old person. So Simon, Simon, he said, not Peter, Peter, Simon, Simon. Satan has asked to sift each of you like wheat, but I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that your faith should not fail. So when you have repented and turned to me again, strengthen your brothers. So I want you to come back. When you're going to come back, you're going to be able to be an encouragement to others. And then Peter said, Lord, I am ready to go to prison with you. He goes, man, I am so down. That's what he says. I'm down for the cross. I'm down for you, Jesus. Right? That's what he was saying. He goes, not me. I'm not going to do nothing. Peter was calling him out. I mean, Jesus was calling him out. And he says, even to die with you, he says. But Jesus said, look at it. I love it. Jesus told him the truth. He said, but hey, 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 Peter, let me tell you something. Before the rooster crows, tomorrow morning... You will deny three times that you will ever know me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, pray that you have your way here today. Speak and let your messenger go to a side. Minister to the hearts that need to hear a word. Speak, Lord, and have your way, Jesus. Your servants are listening to what you have to say. In Jesus' name, everybody says... 
Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. I want you to look at your neighbor and tell him, you are amazing. Come on, you are amazing. All of you are amazing. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. You're amazing, Caleb. You're amazing. Amen. Praise the Lord. John in the back. How many appreciate John in the back? You're amazing, John. John does everything. Amen. You see John everywhere, too. He's faithful to everything. He's faithful to the car wash. He's faithful to everything. The, the gang raised up how much yesterday? Over $550. Amen for the third wave con. They're getting it. They're almost there. I believe they're going to be doing a fundraiser after service. They're going to be selling some food. Parfaits. Amen. Hallelujah. You like how we do announcements? Parfaits. So after service, support the, the youth, even if you don't like parfaits, but bless them anyways. Amen. So they can all go to the third wave con. Amen. Well, today I, I really want to get in there and I want to help somebody get some faith here today. Because a lot of us, and if you don't admit to it, a lot of you do, a lot of we do, we operate in the level of fear, not faith. We don't trust the Lord because we do things not knowing we're doing it in a, in, in a lack and a posture of fear of not knowing if God can come through. That's why people are scared to give sometimes. They give their tithes. I don't know if I could afford to give it. They're doing it in fear, holding back. Or they don't go and witness because they're afraid of rejection. Or they don't step out and believe God for something because they're fearful that it won't work out for them. So you have to make a choice here today, either to operate in the level of faith or to operate in the fear that is going to not work out. But how many know we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us? You see, Jesus was trying to give a fair warning to Simon. And he was telling him, you're about to be sifted. The word sifted means that there was a, a thing that happens with wheat. That it's been shaken and and, and it's shaken apart and breaks it down. When he was saying, you're about to be sift shifted, it was another word for interrogation. This interrogation that Jesus was talking about was not going to come from man. It was going to come from Satan. And Satan was going to shift him and interrogate him. Another translation said this, that he wished to shake Peter's faith so forcefully that he would fall proving that God's faithful servant was lacking. Here, God was warning him that Peter was about to sift him like wheat. And I'm here to let you know that there's an assignment against you. There's an assignment against some of you, and you don't know that you're a target, and you're walking around like everything is okay. But I'm here to let you know that the devil wants to sift you like wheat. There's an interrogation happening. And what's that interrogation? Have you ever been interrogated before? By the police officer that puts you in a corner, in a room, or whatever that is. And what they're trying to do is find out the, the truth to see if you're lying. You see, right there, Jesus was telling you're about to be put in a room and be interrogated by the devil. If you're going to move forward, if you're going to fulfill the call of God, first of all, we got to know what you're made of. Because if you're not made of what you need in the next season, you're going to fall apart in that next season. So Jesus allowed uh, uh, the devil to come and sift him because he was going to prove to the devil that I got a good man. And I'm here to let you know, in Victory Outreach Conquered, we got some good people. You might have been sifted. You might have been shaken. You've been interrogated. But I believe we got some good people here today. I believe that you got some good people here today. See, Peter went through a whole season of weeding, and he did deny Jesus three times. And he struggled, and he went, th he went through a time of repentance. And then he realized, and, and later on in life, when he began to share, he goes, look, because I realized that we can't play patty cake with the devil, that we can't mess around because sometimes we think we could do something for God, but wait a minute, the devil's going to interrogate you to see if you're the capable enough to do anything for God, and he's going to prove to God, see, I got another one. 
And then he goes this way, and he says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, Stay alert. I want you to look at your neighbor and tell him, stay alert. Wake up. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. In other words, somebody to eat up. He's gonna, he wants to eat you up. Stand firm against him. Be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of sufferings you are. What does that mean? It means you're not the only one. Right? You're not the only one going through it. You're not the only one. All of a sudden, you get a call. This, that, this flat tire, poem, all this stuff is happening against you. You're like, what is going on in my life? Why am I getting all these things back to back to back to back? Remember, if you are God's child, you will go through a time of sifting. But Peter says, look, the devil is prowling around, seeking whom is weak to get you. Come on, somebody. And that's why I believe the majority of the attacks today, and if you get hit the most, is maybe and just maybe you got a powerful call in your life. If you've been getting hit a lot, man, I get hit going out, I get hit going in, I get hit just sitting down. You must have a powerful call in your life. There's something different about you. There's something unique when, when you go walking into the room, Jesus notices you walking into this room. But if Jesus is noticing you, the devil notices you too. And sometimes we wonder why we're going through so much. But I'm here to let you know he's not attacking your present. He's attacking your future. you, you got to remember Peter had a future. He was going to establish a church. And the devil wanted to stop what God was going to do through Peter in the future. There's a call in your life. God has called you to do great things for God. There's things that God has put in your spirit to do for the Lord. You're going to have to be tested. You're going to have to be proven. You're going to have to go through some trial. You're going to have to go through some things because the devil wa wants to go after your future. You see, he doesn't hit us because we're at, but he's hitting us because we're going somewhere for him. Can somebody say amen? You got to rem remember because if you just stand still, your family will be restored. If you could hold on, your children will be saved. If you could just get into that posture of not quitting, you'll realize that this is the best life you could ever live. You, if you just get to a place where you say, God, my life is yours, your desires of your heart, God will give those things to you. Even though your world is shaking, I'm here to let you know good things are on the way. Good things are on the way. You see, people get hit because God has spoken over your life. If you've been getting hit, and I've been, I've been hearing about people getting hit left and right, but if you've been getting hit, it's because you've got a promise over you. You've got a word over you. You've got God's call upon your life. You've got a God's handprint about, upon your life. You might have been hurt throughout your entire life and you wonder why things always happen to you but I'm here to introduce you to a God that's working for you he's working for you he's doing it for you he's developing you to be more sometimes we get caught up in the little but God wants to make you much sometimes we get stuck in a job but God wants to give you a calling sometimes we get stuck in a paycheck but God wants to provide for the rest of your life Sometimes we look at the little, but God wants to give us much. We don't serve a little God. We serve a big God. You see, Jesus prayed for Peter. In Luke 22, verse 32, and he says, But I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that your faith should not fail. So when you have repented and turned to me again, strengthen your brothers. You know what he meant? He said, you're going to go through it, but I pray that your faith, and this is Jesus praying for us. How many know Jesus is praying for you? I believe that that's what we need to pray for. We need to pray that our faith stays intact, that we don't give up believing, we don't give up trusting, so that when you come back to me, you're going to be able to teach others to follow Christ. This is what happens when we fall. God shows you how weak you are. This, is happen this happens when we stumble. God shows you you need him. 
This is what happens when we struggle with life and we can't make it. Let me, just, let me get your attention for just a second because this could help your whole future. If, if, if God could show you how weak you are, you could be more dependent on him. And that's what happened to Peter. And then he said, so that your faith will remain, you repent, and now you're going to be able to do it with humility because sometimes we act like we got it all together and we don't have it all together. And sometimes we have this pride posture. God says, no, 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 you could fall like everybody else. I'm one of those people. I always say I could be one of those who fall away. And I say to Jesus every time, Lord, let me not be one of those. Save me. Come on, somebody. Get me in a posture of humility because I want to make sure that my dependency is on Christ and not anything else. <laughs> Hope you're getting something from it this morning. Some of y'all need to be born again, again, and again. You need to have another experience with God. That old, the, the original one dried out already. You're like, oh, yeah, I was, you know, back in 1980, you know. You, know. I mean, you got to get a new, fresh touch. You got to get another touch of the Holy Spirit. I, I believe God wants to do something in your life to get you excited again about serving him. Sometimes we, we don't know that God is doing something, but you're just oblivious because of all the trials that you're going through. Sometimes we get caught up in the trials and the needs and the money and the struggles and the relationship struggles that you don't, get, you don't know that God is moving. Sometimes we even get caught up more in what the devil is doing, but you got to recognize God is doing something. He's just responding to what God is doing. You see, sometimes we get caught up in the problem, but you got to stay true to the promise. You have to trust the Lord. Get through it. Everybody say, I'm going to get through it. Come on. I'm going to get through it. You see, I believe as a believer, how many believers we have in the house? If, if you are a believer, a true believer of Christ, born again, saved, sanctified, blood, bought, washed, cleansed, purified, delivered, set free, devil stomping. Come on, somebody. I know who I'm talking to. Come on. Who am I talking to today? Am I, am I speaking to somebody that knows Jesus? Okay, then I'm, I'm speaking to a good crowd. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 says this. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but love, power, and, and, so, but power and love, and of a sound mind. God is giving us a new spirit. We're not the old person anymore. In order for us to have faith over fear, we need to conquer the spirit of fear. The spirit of fear is important that you understand that it will try to grab your heart. Fear uh, in, the, in the Greek means timidity. It means to be cowardly, shamefully fearing, and caused by weakness and selfish character. I believe that when we are fearful, you become a person that is weak and selfish. In other words, you don't step out because you're afraid you're going to look bad. You don't step out and believe God because you're afraid it's not going to work out. But I'm here to let you know we cannot look at fear that way anymore. Fear, the Bible describes it, as torment. Did you know that fear would torment you and, and, and lock you up? And it'll put you in a place where you can't move? You can't do anything? You're even afraid to pray. You're even afraid to do anything for the Lord. Fear be is becoming your boss and it's guiding you every step of the way. You're afraid to have relationships because you're afraid to get hurt. You're afraid to step out because you're afraid to mess up. I'm here to let you know that God is a person that will guide you and help you in your struggles and your weakness. He is strong in your life. You see, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, it says, there, it says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment, like I said earlier. But he who fears has been made perfect, who is not feared, has made perfect in love. That word d dives or cast out in the Greek means to violently displace. It means to uh, violently take that out. God is taking fear out. In other words, another commentary wrote this. It's, it means that love wants to grab fear by the throat and throw it out the window. That's what it means. 
that love will conquer that. Do you know why a pastor becomes a pastor? Because not because of fear, it's because of love. Do you know the most scary thing, the most scariest thing that they say people have the biggest fear is public speaking? You come, I, I pick any one of you to come up here, you're gonna be like. Uh, 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 uh. You even forget your name. But you know, I had to conquer my fear to become the man I am today. I had to walk in this grace and I had to walk in growing in love in God because my love for God grew greater than my fear. And I got fear and I choked it out and I said, Get out of my way so that I can fulfill the calling of God in my life. That's what it means, casting that violently. Get that fear. Get it out of the way. It's going to stop you from being blessed. Did you know that the sound mind is the opposite of fear? That's why it says a sound mind, meaning discipline and self-control. We don't have no discipline when it comes to your mind. How many here can think of one thing for over five minutes? Only one person. Most of us will be... You got squirrel? Squirrel. You'll change your thought patterns quickly. We have no discipline in focusing on one thing. That's why you're scrolling through social media, or that's why you have to have some kind of computer device or, or phone in front of you because you can't stay focused on what I'm saying. It's just a problem with self-discipline. Learning how to tune in to what's being said here today. This is, that's this generation, and I get it. But we need to have a sound mind to focus on what God has for you. See, fear causes disorder or confusion. It'll confuse you. You'll be all messed up. You don't know what's going on. It'll confuse you. And we, we begin to live a lie. See, the devil wants to make things magnified. Isaiah 43 verse 1 says, Don't fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. God is telling you, do not fear, because what we do is we imagine things are bigger than God. And they're not bigger than God. We elevate things so high, and you're, you're, you're doing things out of fear because you don't trust the Lord. If we all had the spirit of faith, every single one of us would tithe. There'll be no fear in tithing. But it's funny how only 10% or 20% of the church tithe. That means there's only 10% of you that have the true faith to believe God because you think your bills are bigger than God. But how many know my God can supply all my needs according to his riches and glory? You see, that's why I spoke this message because I believe in order for us to get into a building that I'm looking for on Monday, I'm going to go look at this other building that we have in line. We're still waiting on the other one, but I'm looking at this other one. The other one's about 8,000 square feet, and I believe in God for it. But guess what? I can't move in my own faith. I can't move in just my wife and I's faith. I have the faith to believe. I've stepped out in faith this whole time. That's why I was able to start the recovery home. I was able to start this church because I stepped out in faith. But I need some folks. I need some people that got some faith here today. Because I can't walk into the promised land all by myself and all by my own faith. I need some people that got faith with me. Because what's going to happen is I'm going to walk into a promised land and I'm going to look back and say, where's everybody at? What's, where's everybody at? What happened? Oh, I got bills. I got, I got something to take care of. Like, Wait a minute, but we got to set up the church. We got to make it look beautiful. I, I don't have time, Pastor. I, it's, it's too much for me. And the Lord spoke to me. He told me, just like Joshua and Caleb was there at the brink of the promise, and they spied out the land. It was 10 people, and all of them had a negative report, but Joshua and Caleb came back with a positive report, and he said, we can conquer the giants. We could do it. We could do it. But guess what happened? They didn't go into the promise. They had to wait another whatever years before they can go because the people weren't ready. The people didn't have the faith to trust the Lord. Only Joshua and Caleb had enough faith. But God didn't rely. He could say, I can't go into a promised land with just two people having faith. I need the whole tribe, come on, the Israelites, to have the faith to believe and to go into. 
So God is speaking to me and he's telling me to tell you, we need VO Conquer to have the faith to believe God for our promise, for our next season. I can't go with just two people believing. I need to have a whole group of family with me, behind me, working it, doing it, serving and believing. You see, we can't go out there imagining things are going to get bad. I'm trying to stop that from happening myself. I'm not trying to imagine the worst. I'm trying to believe God for the best. You got to pray for me. Gotta, I, I, I look around and I'm saying, who has faith in the room? I look at the, the offering basket. It doesn't look too good sometimes. And man, it can't even, I can't pay a bill because people are not giving the way they're supposed to give. And they're not trusting. I have to look and say, oh, Lord, I'm not going to look at the basket. I'm going to look at the promise. I'm believing God that you will be obedient to the calling of God in your life. And, and some of y'all just need to be obedient and be faithful to that. You see, I'm only challenging you here today because I can't go into this next season with just me and a few others having faith. I need a, a team of people. I need our church to step into an arena and begin to trust God with what they have and to trust the Lord. You see, God needs to give us Nah, he needs to allow us to conquer that spirit of fear in our church. But God also wants to give you and us today a spirit of faith. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, it says, And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe and therefore I spoke, we also believe, therefore we speak. When God gives you a spirit of faith, you speak miracles into existence. You speak life over your children. You speak life over your finances. You speak life over your bank accounts. You speak life over your job and your boss. You speak life over your future. You speak life over these things because you have a spirit of faith. Woo. Am I preaching to somebody here today? Because I... I I think I can preach to myself and be encouraged right now. Spirit of faith brings momentum. Spirit of faith, we can do it. We can go. You see, I'm not hearing too many people telling me, Pastor, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's, go. let's do this. If, you can't, if you're so afraid of passing on a flyer, how can I get you to go into your promise? If you can't even pass the flyer. You see, I need people to step out and believe God that God has given you the power to be a witness in the city where people are committing suicide, where people are lost and confused, where you go to a city of darkness and people all around us are either getting high, drunk, or confused about their life. But I'm here to let you know God wants to raise us up and tell us, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Psalms 107 says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Come on, somebody. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You can't be living struggling all the time. You struggle the first couple years of your salvation, but it's time to pick up your cross and follow him. It's time to walk the walk and talk the talk. It's time to live the life and try to be what you're called, God's called you to be. You see... Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Speak over your situations. We can't pray our fears. We need to pray our faith. We pray doubt. We don't pray faith. We pray what, what the worst thing that could happen. And Lord, if you will do this, God, and if it works out, Jesus, if it's your, your will, no, not that kind of prayer. I need somebody that says, in the name of Jesus, this demon will leave this house. Lord, my bank accounts will be filled. My, my children will know the Lord. My brothers will know Jesus. Pray your faith, not pray your fears. A lot of us pray fearly, fear prayers. Well, we need to pray in faith. Speak over, I, I remember speaking over my money. And I, I said, how many of you ever get tired of going to the ATM and you don't have enough? I'm on, so, oh, I got a witness up in here, amen. You go there like, Lur! I'm like okay, Just hopefully nobody looked at that one. You know, I've, I've been there. I know. I know what that feels like. Like you don't have enough and you're struggling. 
And I remember I would say, I, I went back to my prayer closet. I said, Lord, I remember I, I got my bank card. I go, fill my bank accounts with finances. In the name of Jesus, I will not be the tail. I'll be the head, Lord. I'm going to pray over my finances. I'm going to pray that my bank account will be filled. And I said, fill it up, Jesus. I'm not going to live in poverty anymore. I'm going to live in the blessing of the Lord. I've been sowing. It's time for me to start reaping. Hello, somebody. And so I remember I got up from prayer and I said, I, I told my wife, I go, hey, I, I prayed that our bank accounts would be filled. And lo and behold, that week, the Lord blessed us and filled our bank accounts. God provided finances from somewhere, somehow. It was the Lord that provided. And I told her, look, God answered prayer and he filled my bank account. Y'all going to be praying your bank accounts right now, amen? You'll be like praying over your ATM, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Pray that ATM will blow up, amen, hallelujah. Pray faith over your situation. Stop praying negative. I can have Caleb make his way up. What, what I really want to help you understand is that when you live a life of faith, you bring revival to an atmosphere. Revival is important in this world today. This world needs revival. Right now, this world is, is in survival mode. Everybody's trying to survive. You go to Walmart, there's a security guard just mad dogging you on your way in. They're no longer saying hi, they're just looking at you up and down. You go to Safeway, the same thing. They'll go in there and they're checking to see if you're gonna be robbing the store. You go to different places and you hear it, you feel it. And you hear about the economy, just like somebody just told me about the bank, one of the banks, uh, somebody, it was a cyber attack and, and they took over one of the banks and they couldn't withdraw any money. People are panicking. People are afraid about finances. And people are worried about the economy. Who's going to be the next president? I, I believe that we, if you really understand and read the times today, because don't be oblivious to what's happening around you. We get caught up in our own problems, and poor me. But I need you to break out of yourself here today and say, no longer am I going to just take this spirit of depression on me. I need to grow into a, a spirit of victory here today. And trust the Lord and get through a season because the world needs you to stand up. We get caught up in woe is me, what I don't have. But you got to realize that what you do got is the power of God in your life. Yeah. Revival, the spirit of revival. You need to conquer fear. You need to have a spirit of revival in your heart. Spirit of revival, sear it up. I'm praying for revival over our city. I'm praying revival over Northern California. I'm praying revival over your families and everybody around you. It's time to stop soaking in the doubt and the fear. And start believing God at His Word and say, God, I'm praying over my situation. Matter of fact, I'm going to start fasting. I'm going to start believing God. It's time that the God's people begin to rise up in faith and trust the Lord here today. Do not ignore my call. The call that God has given us here this morning is the call to stand up and be, be counted and say, Lord, use me. Use me. Is there anybody says, Lord, I, I see I go to Antioch, I go to these places, violent stuff is happening in the streets. People are getting mugged. and You can't even keep, keep your car stuff in there. They're going to break in your car. The, word, the Bible says the Davis will get evil or lawlessness will be in the land. And there's going to be earthquakes in diverse places and diseases that are uncuable. Listen, these are, you got to read the times. You got, to, you got to know what's going on around you because you're getting caught up and wanting to get high again or wanting to go get drunk again. You want to go do those things. Wake up and smell what God is doing. Revival is here. And now we're, are we, VO Conquer, going to miss the boat? Are we going to miss the boat? Because it's only a handful of us that go to the streets. It's only a handful of us to come to a prayer meeting. It's only a handful of us that give. But I'm looking for us to come together as a church to rise up. God was having a problem with the Israelites. And he says, my God, how long are we going to wait to get to this promise that only should have took a week, but it's taken 40 years? 
Sometimes it, it's, the, the promise is prolonged because the problem is we don't believe. We are moving in fear. We're afraid of the giants. We're afraid of the intimidating points of our lives. But here, God says to the Israelites in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. I believe that when we get to a posture that says, I'm ready, Lord, you know what he's going to do? Listen, listen to me. He's going to bring dead things to life. He'll open up heaven. Matter of fact, religion dies in the house of God. And relationship thrives in the house of God. He'll turn the sinner to Jesus. He'll turn people to God. If we, as a church, begin to rise up and become all that you, God called you to become. You see, the spirit of fear will try to captivate you captivate you. The spirit of faith will release you. And the spirit of revival will commission you. Will send you out. We can't allow fear to be our boss anymore. We operate in a level of fear and that's why you'll never be blessed. That's why you're always confused and that's why you're always stressed. But I'm here to let you know it's time to get a sound mind and clarity of thought. It's time to get the word in your spirit. It's time to be a, have a posture of prayer. It's time to know that God is on the move. Don't let, don't let fear be your boss, guys. Don't let it lead you. It'll always lead you to being broke. It'll always lead you to less and not more. It will always lead you to, to not receiving God's best. But when you operate in a level of faith, you begin to operate in a trust level. In the miracle season, I want to see more miracles in the house. I want to see revival take place. I want to see miracles in your life. I want to see God heal some of you from sickness and diseases. But the only way that's going to happen is that faith needs to rise up in this room. Remember, Jesus didn't do any miracles in his homeland because they didn't believe in him. They thought he was just the son of a carpenter. They didn't really trust that he could do miracles. So he left his homeland. He went to another land. They believed. Is Jesus going to pass by and be old conquered because we don't believe? Because he'll, he'll operate in miracles if we as a church begin to believe. You see, we're only a recipient of what we believe here today. If, if there's no miracles in the house, it's because there's no faith in the house. And I want to declare that this place will be holy ground. Listen! Will be holy ground for miracles, signs, and wonders. This place will be a ground... Listen, 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 listen. This will be ground zero for revival. It sounded better in my prayer closet, amen. And I hear only a couple of you clapping, yeah, hoo, hoo, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, ooh, it sounded better in my prayer closet because I was screaming and hollering, yeah. This is ground zero for revival. Do you believe that? It's ground zero for revival. Do you believe that? I, 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 you're not convincing nobody. Yeah, I don't think you convinced the devil. The devil's like, yeah, right. I'm, a, I'm about to sift you like wheat. This church will be too small if we really believed it. Did you know that? We have no fear, but all faith. You would witness to everybody around you. You would tell people. You would compel people. You would pull people. You would convince them by giving them lunch after church. You would do whatever it took to get them to church. This church will be too small for us. Let's, let's rise up. This is what's going to happen. 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. I read this earlier. Such love has no fear. 
because perfect love expels all fear. If you are afraid, it's for fear of punishment. And this shows that you have not fully, listen, experienced his perfect love. If, 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 if you really have an experience with God, nobody will hold you back. Remember, it was love that made Jesus lay down his life for us. What are we willing to do? We, we have about 5,000 flyers that we haven't passed out. Nobody's asking, hey, can I get some flyers to pass out? I, I need some people to rise up now. It's time. Can I speak to you as, a, as a, the big papa in the house? Come on. I, I'm just trying to help somebody. Come on. Let, let, let. I, when I first got saved, the Lord radically saved me. Radically. Man, I got an encounter with God. Man, I had angels around me. Boy, I had all kinds of, my wife was there. We were watching chariots. Both of us watching chariots right there. Like, whoo, we got saved, saved, saved. And then when God did a miracle and, and he raised my brother from the dead for just to tell me that heaven was real, then I got really saved. And then when the Lord started using me to start going and, and doing concerts and, and doing all kinds of stuff, boy, I was on fire. And then I saw revival break loose because I saw people around me getting saved and the Holy Spirit was moving in a powerful, powerful way. And I'm here to let you know, my fire has not died out. I've always been in a posture that says, I want more. I'll get up early in the morning and I'll seek his face. I'll be the first out in the streets. I'll be the first one in the prayer meeting. I'll be the first one surrendering. Why? Because I've been this way all my life. And I'm looking for some radical people in this house. I'm looking for some radical people in this house because I haven't found anybody yet. Because screaming is not enough. Doing is all about doing here today. It's all about being. It's all about doing, guys. Come on. Sometimes we were big and bad in the prison, but you can't be big and bad in Jesus. Come on. You, we could be big and bad in the neighborhood, but you're coming, coming to God. We ain't big and bad anymore. We, we ain't going to go out there and start being bold, start being as a lion, begin to testify with a bullhorn and begin to share the gospel. We're so afraid about what people are thinking or doing. You don't realize that it's time for us as a church to be recognized in the city of Concord that we're not afraid of the gospel because it's the power of the salvation. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm trying to, with all my heart, give you something. You're going to want it, though. If you don't want it, I get it. I understand. You want to be settled with your life, I get it. I totally get it, you know. Sometimes we're comfortable, you know. These chairs are pretty comfortable, you know. They're, I like these chairs. Nice and black, comfy cushions. And we sit in these chairs, and that's a blessing. I'm glad you're comfortable. But I'm looking for some uncomfortable people. I'm looking for people that are willing to pick up their cross and get uncomfortable for Jesus. And don't use the laundry Every time you got to go to the streets or you have something to do and you're too busy, I, I got to make sure I, I put it in your schedule uh, of something that we have to do in the church. It's time to move our schedule around so that we can take care of business in the kingdom of God. Can I, can I be truthful with you? Can I, can I do a little bit of rebuking, a little correcting? Is that all right? That's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to move us out, break us out. Come on. Remember, remember I said, I said earlier that when you have the spirit of love, you, you choke out fear and you throw it out the window. That's violent. That's what we do. We get it out of the way. I'm tired of living the way I was living. It's time to ri rise up. It's time to rise up those who are online. God bless you. Amen. Time to be the people that God calls you to be. I, I, I'm just going to challenge you here today. I don't want you to leave this church without being challenged. I want you to grab a stack of flyers and I want you to pass them out all week. I want you to witness to about 20 people and I want you to intentionally tell them about Jesus. I want you to pray for somebody this week. Matter of fact, if you could just get up in the morning and start praying in the morning, I guarantee next Sunday you'll be on fire. Sometimes we don't even get up for prayer. We get up for coffee more than prayer. We need to get up more for Jesus. I, I'm just trying to help somebody here today. 
get 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 in the place of I'm I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to go take the next step. I'm ready to live my life for God. I'm ready to surrender everything I have. And let's see what the Lord's going to do. How I many know oh, God is good? Amen. He's so good. He's going to do something tonight or today. I, I'm believing those who want to get uncomfortable and start serving the Lord with all their heart. I'm going to believe God for you. Tonight, let's lay down our cries. Let's lay down our cries. 